Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Your Teens Facebook Live. We have a very special guest this morning. We have Mary Laura Philpott, who's a best-selling author. We're thrilled uh, to have you here and right on the heels of your brand new book, Bomb Shelter. We see your poster in the back, Mary Laura. <laughs> there, wait, there it is. <laughs> I know. I feel like after this much time, on Zoom, I should know which way to go right. with things or to point, <laughs> see I'm pointing the wrong way to point to you. Um, so for those who haven't had the pleasure of reading your book yet, it just came out right last week? A uh, week before, but yeah, it's been out week like before, barely two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hopefully some folks have read the book. I have. I loved it. Um, but uh, just to summarize a little bit, it's I think it's a memoir about being human. I mean, it's, yes, it, it is um, on the surface or the, the precipitating event is that your teenage son had this terrifying seizure in the mm -hmm. middle of the night. And uh, you talk about that and the aftermath of that interwoven with just the parts of life and um, the intersection of love and loss and feeling anxiety and joy all at once. Um, you got it. You're hired. Yeah. That's it. That's the <laughs> elevator pitch. <laughs> but, but I mean, it sounds dark. Um, I I, say, I would say it's a deep book, but you have such a light touch that it's just Thank such you. a pleasure. Um, it's just such a pleasure to read read your book. So thank you, thank you. And, I think and, I think of it as landing in a in a bright place. I think of it as oh, a feel 100%. good book. Like it has to go through the stuff that that feels not so good, but it's it's. It's definitely a feel good book. It's a mood lifter. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I agree. And I think we're so lucky um, as humans or, and as parents of teenagers to be able to enjoy your book and help us process all those, those contradictions in life. Um, but it makes me wonder, I, I feel like, you know, we're lucky we have the book, but you had to figure all that out. I mean, I'm, <laughs> so right. I, I wonder when you're writing this, memoir. Did you know at the beginning, you know, I, you know, I, Mary Laura, know myself well enough that I know these are the things that are, you know, pinging around in my head and this is what I need to write about? Or do you figure it out through the process of writing? Kind of both. That's a great question because it's a little bit of both. Like there is, when you're writing memoir, there is the degree to which the author is living the experience while writing it but then there's also this sort of weird detachment where there's a character like the main character in this book is the me character but she's me from a few years ago so i'm i'm manipulating that character and the plot as it were um at the same time that i'm remembering it so it is a little mm. it's a little meta it's a little weird um but the good news is that because there's some distance between like where the book starts and now, you know, I had some time to process. So I was out ahead. I'm out ahead of the reader. I've done some processing. I right. have a sense of where this is going. I knew the last line of the book well before I got to writing the last chapter. I knew where I wanted to land the plane. Um, I knew I loved that. it, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm I sure knew... your mother did too. I won't give it away <laughs> what it is. Thank you. I knew that what I wanted this book to do for readers is what I, I wished a book, I wish I'd had a book that could have done this for me, which is basically to say that, you know, this period of life, this strange time when you have, your little children have turned into teenagers who will soon be leaving the nest and your parents have gotten older and are, you know, roles are getting a little reversed there. And this human body that I have is now middle-aged, which, you know, where did that come from? Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in that time. And especially if anything comes along, any big event, which I feel like we all get to the stage and everybody has something that happens that turns everything upside down, it can feel really unsettling. And it can feel like the earth has just slipped out from under our feet, like all the stability we had has destabilized. And I wanted to show how you get through that with a sense of joy and humor and and general optimism intact because I wanted that back. You know, when I was at my lowest, I was like, how do I get back to that? Yes. And you do it so successfully. And I do wonder because you have so much wisdom in the book and in your words, do people ask for advice? <laughs> I mean, in these interviews, 
do, do, do interviewers say, Mary Laura, what would you tell parents? And, and do you feel comfortable with that? Because All you do have so much to share. <laughs> All the time. That's the one like funny side effect of if you write any sort of memoir about getting through a hard time, people are like, so how'd you do it? What's the secret? And the whole point of this book really is that there is no secret. Like hmm. one of the greatest things we can do for ourselves, I think, is to accept and actually verbalize out loud that we have so little control hmm. over most things. When you accept that and you stop struggling and fighting against the reality of, of not having control, it's actually really freeing and really peaceful and really nice. Um, but so the, one of the points of the book is that I don't have the magical secret to get through things and, and you know, make everything better because you can't always make everything better. But yes, people ask, ask for advice all the time. And I'm so not an advice columnist <laughs> and I am just living... I'm living my life one learned lesson in real time at a time. <laughs> you mentioned uh, a lot in the in the book and just now about that sense of control and we're all searching for that. And I couldn't help but think that maybe writing the book itself, did that give you any feeling of control? Because you have essentially, you have frozen this moment in time in the yeah. book. I mean, it's like a photo album, but you know, bigger. Did yeah. you did you do that explicitly or is that important to you? I've been thinking about that a lot lately because of course life keeps moving. You know, I have this little illusion of if I can take the events of this, you know, it was roughly a two year period that's encapsulated in bomb shelter. If I can take the events of these two years and arrange them and create, you know, this illusion of a plot, which of course there is a plot. You just can't see how it's unfolding when you're in it. You know, if I can make it into a book, then now it's a story. And I will say there there is a little bit of, you know, deep in my heart, this feeling of like, well, wait, I, I made the book and it has a last page and I, and, you know, I encapsulated and it's out there. How can parenting still be so hard? Yeah. <laughs> like, how, how can I still be struggling with, you know, a lack of control and, you know, why that feeling of why can't I just love everybody hard enough and have that be enough to keep them safe, which of course is impossible. Um, yeah, there is a little bit of tension there, but it it's therapeutic. You know, writing is therapeutic, which is not enough of a reason to write a book. Writing a book is hard. It's easier to just go to therapy. And I do both. But yeah, there is some there's some benefit to be gained from processing it and putting words to it and kind of taking all that static in my head and articulating it. It's a little bit of bringing order out of chaos. So do you write every day in, in a memoirish way, a journal, so to speak? I don't keep a journal, but I am usually working on something, whether mm -hmm. it's a book or, um, you know, a shorter piece that I'm working on for a magazine or a newspaper. And generally whatever I'm working on is pulling threads from life. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a little bit of a cheat to say I don't keep a journal because I do write every day and I am processing things every day, but I don't have like a diary or a document where I'm just, you know, jotting out the events of the day. Right. Right. So as parents of teenagers, I want to talk to you about parenting teenagers. I think it's apparent in your writing that you just, you really enjoy teenagers. I and, do. Yeah. I, and I didn't think I would. <laughs> so I, I was going to ask, did that come to you naturally? Did you have to cultivate that? Or were you just so delighted by your own humans that, uh, like, do you enjoy other people's teenagers too? I, I mean, you know, not as much as my own. But I remember when I had, you know, little kids and I would be at the park, you know, pushing my toddlers on a swing and teenagers would go skateboarding by or I'd be, you know, out running errands and I'd see teenagers in the mall and I would just think, oh my gosh, they seem so loud and big and unruly and oh gosh they're intimidating you know like i thought mm -hmm. teen i thought having teenagers would be intimidating and scary and hard and i would probably just be mad at them all the time because they would hate me and it you know certainly has its difficult moments but mm -hmm. i've loved having teenagers i mean you can have conversations with a teenager that you cannot have with a toddler you know mm -hmm. you can you can go places with them. They can travel with you. You know, they can stay up late and watch movies with you. There's so much more you can do with them. And so I found that I really 
enjoy these teenage years, which is part of what makes the whole leaving the nest thing so bittersweet. Yes. Like, I, you know, I kind of feel like, but wait, we just started getting to have fun together. And now right. you're leaving. Now yeah, I have a relationship right. with a with a full person. Right. And, right. and we're just getting started. Exactly. Um, so one of the delightful parts of the book I thought was when you're talk when you're talking about your your son is older and your daughter's younger, but they're mm -hmm. both, I believe, teenagers now. Um, and this your son was, you know, you were arguing about something as we do with our teenagers. I'm the parent of three, two of them are teenagers. Um, so we're in the same ballpark. Yeah. Um, so you, we bicker with our kids, we nag, we, you know, we have tensions and your younger daughter, I think you said she was about 10 and she said, am I going to argue when I'm a teenager? And, <laughs> and you said, yes, you will. And we'll love you anyway. And we will love you anyway. I, she, she was observing some fight going down between my son yeah. and me. And she was just like, Oh, <gasps> Is that what's going to happen when I'm that age? And I was like, yeah, it is totally. And, and we're just going to get through it. And it's, it's, that's it's funny in another way too, because it kind of speaks to that, their lack of control. Like they're heading into puberty and with like this, the wheels are going to come off. They don't even know what's coming for them either. No, there's such a mirror between what teenagers are going through as they turn from children into teenagers and then from teenagers into adults and what their middle-aged moms are going through mm -hmm. as we turn from you know young adults into whatever this is now right, I don't even right. like is this middle age I guess and then also if a mirror could work three ways this thing our parents generation is now going through I'm watching my parents and their friends begin to struggle with um, losing a little bit of their independence and right. having health struggles and, and just the roles are changing. And I feel like all three of us, the, the teenagers, the parents and the grandparents are all in this sort of transitional period of yes. sorts. And we're all like, what is happening? Here we go. Hurtling right. forward. Right. What's going on? We're I all in it together, I guess. This. Yeah. I mm. hadn't thought about it especially with um, our parents' generation with, because we talk about, you know, my kid's going through puberty and uh, I'm going through menopause and isn't that, isn't that charming? <laughs> um, but then, you know, with that sandwich generation thing, our parents are going through a lot as well. Uh, yeah. And it's just all there. And, and we're, su we're supposedly the adults in the middle yes. who are going to take care of all of it. Yeah. Somehow. Do you, I hear people say sometimes, uh, you know, I still don't feel like an adult. Um, have you ever thought about when you started feeling like an adult? Has it happened? Do you now? <laughs> it hits me and it hits me in waves. There's a little, a little passage toward the beginning of bomb shelter where I write about, um, my back is always messed up. I, yes. I have an injury, old injury in my back. And then I'm all just, I don't take care of it. So I was lying on the floor one night to try to like realign my spinal cord. And I was looking, just kind of looking at the room from upside down and observing things in the room as measures of adulthood. Like I was looking at, you know, we have these blue curtains in our living room. And I was like, those are really nice curtains that like belong in an adult house. And I, <laughs> You know, and I bought them with money that I earn as an adult person because I pay taxes. And there is my dog. And that is my, that's our fourth dog that my husband yeah. and I have had. Like, so, sometimes I see things and they sort of hit me as these metrics of adulthood. And it's a little disorienting because, you know, all those prior versions of myself live in here too. 22-year-old right. me is in here. 30-year-old me is in here. And then periodically I look around and I'm like, oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm 40 something me. How did that happen? Yeah. And, and I don't know if this ever happens to you where you, you think back to when you were a child and your parent was turning 40 or 45 and you thought that was so old. And if you ever get a chance to glimpse at photos now. Oh my gosh. They're not that old. <laughs> no. In fact, they may have been younger than we are now. Yes. When we thought this. <laughs> Absolutely. It's wild. It's, it's. And one of the things I write about in Bomb Shelter is kind of in going through my own parenting challenges and midlife challenges and everything, I reflect on what my parents went through that I didn't, that I could not have appreciated at the time, the burdens that they carried that I 
that I didn't see because, you know, when you're young, you're just oblivious to what your parents are going through. Um, and I, you know, sometimes I sort of wish I could have a time machine just so I could go back and be like, I get it. Totally yeah. get it now. First of all, I'm sorry you had to have me as a teenager. Like uh, you had to go through everything that I put you through. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I get it now. Yeah. And some of that shielding is intentional. You know, there again, there's that that desire to protect our kids and to keep them safe and to yeah. be the adult for them. Right. So, right. Yeah. So speaking of the whole parenting teenager thing here at, at your teen, one of the things, one of the reason that we're here, the reason that your teen exists um, came out of a desire to provide support, community information in a time when you start, you can start to feel isolated. I mean, you don't have the play groups anymore. Right. Um, your kids' problems may seem a little too private to share with other people now. Mm -hmm. um, so part of what we do is to make to have to make each other feel less alone. And I, I do think the book is helpful in that as well. But I was curious um, as someone who, you know, edits essays from parents and someone who writes essays myself like you. How do your kids feel about being included in your in your writing? Is that yeah. is that comfortable for them? That's a great question. And, you know, I, obviously I can't answer for them. Only they could really answer that question. But um, I have left them out of my writing for most of my writing career. I've been, I've always shied away from writing anything about family that involved actually telling stories with other family members in the mm. story. Um, but because of what I wanted Bomb Shelter to do, and to get to your point about this lonely period of life, like I wanted this to be a book that made people feel less lonely, that they could read and have words for what this time of life feels like and feel sort of re-energized and invigorated and like, oh, the things I do really do matter. I, you know, I'm I'm doing the best I can. We're all doing the best I can. But to tell that story and to get that me character through the narrative arc of, oh, I feel like everything is unstable. And then, oof, this big, awful thing happens. And how am I going to come back from it? I really had to make sure you could feel how awful yeah. the awfulness was. And that meant I had to be able to show and tell certain scenes that would have a big emotional impact. One of those would be the, the scene where we find my son unconscious having a seizure. Um, there are other scenes that involve my family that, that sort of serve the same purpose. So <clears throat> the good news is I have lived with these people for a long time. They know me, they know my work. They understood what I was doing. They understood, you know, this is all toward a larger narrative purpose. They understood that I had put up a lot of guardrails for their privacy. I don't use their names in my writing. I really don't develop them as characters. They're, they mm -hmm. only appear in so much as they have to for me to tell you this story about what my character is going through. And, you know, they got to read the first the first draft and, and were lovely and gracious and supportive, did not veto anything. Um, and they're old enough now, too, that I feel like, you know, one is an adult, one is almost an adult. That's that's meaningful consent, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the part of our job as parents, when we're talking to our friends or processing our own experience is starting for ourselves too to separate their experience from our ours. Yeah. And, you know, it may be, well, you know, now I can't talk about them anymore. You know, we may feel frustrated by that, but we find that, you know, focusing on your own experience, there's a lot to, there's a lot to be said there. And, and we find that at your team, a lot of, uh, if there's a lot to say about parenthood and the experience of being us as parents too, we don't necessarily need to share our yeah. kids' experience because it's theirs now and our right. experience is ours. Right. So. But there's also so much focus, I feel like at, at this time of life on, and rightly so, on the teenagers themselves. How do we best help them? What support do they need? You know, the, it's almost like in our in our little lifespan, this generation, the parents, we've now slipped into kind of the background and it's like, look, fresh adults. These are the ones we've got to put all our focus on, mm -hmm. but we are still going through stuff. And I think we need support and we need information and we need to laugh and we need to be able to connect about what this is like. So I'm, I was 
really sort of happy to be able to put a book into a space where I don't feel like there are a lot of books. You know, nobody writes like what to expect when you're expecting a high school senior. Right. It does not exist. It should, but it doesn't. Um, so I, it, it made me happy to think as I'm going through this time of life, it feels kind of lonely. Maybe mm-hmm. what I've created here will go out there and make somebody else feel less lonely. That's right. I'm sure that's true. Well, I think we're reaching the end of our time and I feel like we could talk for hours and I know I see our viewers following along and you're getting some lovely compliments. Um, You're getting, (laughs) the book is amazing. Just beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. Another book is amazing. Oh my Um, goodness. So yeah, and uh, we're so happy to have you. Uh, Everyone, please pick up the book. You'll be hooked from, if you don't, if you don't like the first three pages, (laughs) <laughs> come talk to me what's wrong um give it and- to people give it to people as a graduation present not for the graduate yes. for the parents you get your own present okay <laughs> thank you thank you everybody for coming thank you mary laura and uh we will see the your teen folks tomorrow at our next gathering and bye to mary laura thank you